Let's go back to the phone lines, or let's go to the phone lines, talk to Janet in uh, Washington, listening on KARI. Hi, Janet. Hi. Thank you, Hank, for taking my call. I love your program, and I've been praying for your help. Oh, bless you. And I have a two-part question. Um, when you die and go to heaven, are your sorrows, is that when God wipes away every tear, or is it like after the rapture? Well, first of all, let's get straight what's going on. So if you were to die, let's say tomorrow, God forbid, uh, if you were to die tomorrow, you'd be absent the body, present with the Lord. When Jesus appears a second time, there's life after life after life, meaning that at that time, the non-physical aspect of your humanity would be united with the physical aspect of your humanity, the body that died, and you'll be resurrected immortal, imperishable, incorruptible. So when you die, you are now absent the body, present with the Lord, and you are in a condition of bliss because you're with that great cloud of witnesses. And In essence, you are with the Lord. You're in the presence of the Lord and those who love him. So this is a state of bliss. But it is only a foretaste of what will come when we enter the eternal state and then we learn and grow and develop without error. We experience the presence of the Lord and we forever explore the glories of his created handiwork. That's wonderful, and I, and that was my question. I knew it was two part, but, but it seemed to me that as soon as we go to heaven, if I would die tomorrow, let's say, um, there's no more sorrow or sadness, and that that came up at our Bible study, and I just wanted to make sure, and I've listened to you all the time, and it's is that when God wipes away every tear? Yeah, I, I think you can say heaven? that. I, I think you can absolutely yeah. say that because that's a time of bliss. Uh, That's a time that's described by Jesus in Luke 16 as Abraham's bosom or paradise. So it's a time of peace and joy. It's uh, not a time of sadness, sadness uh, personified by tears in the eyes, but it is a a time of joy. Obviously, you can have tears in the eyes, (laughs) tears of joy, but, but the metaphor... Uh, is is God is going to take away our sadness. Well, yes, when we're in the presence of the Lord, we're not going to be sad. We're going to be absolutely fulfilled. But again, it's a foretaste. So the metaphor extended properly reaches its final height of conclusion when Jesus himself ushers us into the eternal state. So there's a temporary heaven and there's an eternal heaven. The temporary heaven is the heaven in which we're in a disembodied state. The eternal heaven is the one in which we are once again body soul unities. Mm-hmm. But but we but just even in our bodiless, our our we'll be happy with the Lord. Oh, absolutely, no absolutely, because we're not only going to be with the Lord, we're also going to be with those who are in His presence that love Him. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to be with that great cloud of witnesses. So yes, we will be uh, delighted in the presence of the Lord, what's called paradise or Abraham's bosom. It is a way of mm-hmm. speaking about intimacy with the Lord. And so we will be overjoyed. Yes. I wish everyone would believe that because it's just too wonderful. And the very last part of my question, I think you've already answered. In other words, for those of us that have families on earth, when we go to heaven, we wouldn't be sorrowful if we saw them grieving. Well, we would see things from God's perspective. Um, and, and, and that's the ultimate joy. When we see things from God's perspective, we will see that God does all things perfectly. It's sort of like being a fly on the wall uh, in, in, in a trial. When you know what actually happened and you see that the judge is comporting his judgments in complete concert with what actually happened as you know it to be, you'd be happy about that, regardless of how sad the trial might be in terms of its content. 